So we received a request to uh, allow managers to reset their subordinates' passwords. And so uh, I started playing around with this and uh, just show the form how it works first. Uh, grab an employee, grab a uh, temporary password. We want to change that. And then we could select how we want that to be delivered to us, either through email or Teams. Bada boom, bada bing. And within a couple of seconds, I get a Teams message that says, <clears throat> within a couple of seconds. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, there we go. Sweet. So, yeah, because I'm <laughs> presenting, it didn't show the Teams message. But anyhow, so we'll go to the back end of this thing. So here's my form. It's pretty basic. Uh, I have this employee select field. It's running to an options generator to get direct reports for that. Uh, version 2.0, I want to get direct reports of the direct reports that direct report to the reporters. Uh, but I think I need like Tim or Adam to go ahead and do that. This here is the sub for that. It goes out. It actually grabs the uh, username off the actual user that's submitting the form. It just throws it in there and grabs the direct reports. Uh, I don't think it does anything special there. No, yeah, so it just it retrieves a list of the direct reports and sends it back to the uh, the form. So show us show us how it does that. How do we know? Like, how does Graph tell us uh, who a direct report is? <laughs> oh yeah, so that's just a uh, it's literally uh, an in for it. So use the username and then slash direct reports. Uh, I wanted to get the display name, UPN, mobile phone, on-premise sync enabled, and on-premise sync last date time ID. I wanted to do something really cool with this here, uh, but it kind of sucks, so I didn't do anything cool with it. That's what uh, me and you were playing with, Tim, that we couldn't get it to actually to play on the uh, display on the form there. Yeah. But that's essentially that. You just grab the direct reports, create a list of it. Like I said, I'd like to cascade that and get direct reports of direct reports later on down the road. Any other questions, Tim? Did you, uh, what did you want to like run the workflow and show like markdown showing last thing time or something? Yeah, so yeah. just that. I, when I was coming up with my test workflow today, I, I wanted to do the same thing, and I was like, we don't do that. So this won't throw anything for us because we don't have a local AD to sync from, but um, I did run it for some of our other clients, and what you got was you got the last time that their actual password was set and synced. So you don't get the actual, like, the password sync ran 30 minutes ago. You get the password ring sync ran, and it actually had a delta on their password in, you know, on December 4th. So what I was really hoping to get there was like, you know, if this last sync date time would have showed like the last time the sync actually ran 30 minutes ago or something, we could actually check to make sure it's actually still viable. If it's not, then, you know, then we could actually just change it in Azure instead of doing it uh, on the local domain controller. But because of that, you know, there wasn't really a good time frame. Like, what do you say? Like, it's been changed in 120 days and you got people with weird password policies. So it really wasn't all that good. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, did we have the whole thing? Is that it? No, that was just that one little portion there. Uh, the passwords, I just pulled up all my little sub -germs here. So here's the password generator here. It generates the password off of these transforms. Uh, it does a with iterations here. And that iteration is pulled from the CTX generations here off of the actual form here. So this bad boy here. Uh, Oh, no, this one here, yeah. So within the password film, we could tell how many we want. So if we wanted to give them 16 different passwords to choose from and so on, you could do it there, and it drops it into that sub. And then here's the actual, uh, here's the actual workflow for that. So when we actually submit the, the form for that, uh, the first thing I had to do was grab the Ninja ID, which is our RMM, because if we have to go through here and uh, set it locally because they have that sync enabled um, we'll need that so this is just essentially it looks for the uh, on-premise sync enabled 
here. If it is enabled, it'll go through these sub workflows here. If it's not enabled, it'll just drop it directly to graph and change the password. And then the Syndra vault results here is directly linked to that. Uh, that drop down here, so whatever result you set there. Yeah, we'll have it drop into there and send a. Uh, email through this or a. Uh, a teams for that. Now the uh, teams message that was kind of fun and I had. I think Adam and uh, Andrew helped me out with this. So what we found to actually send a Teams message is you had to have a Teams license on the uh, account that was actually making the call. And in this case, it's the account that you authorize uh, the Roost app for. So whatever your Mac Daddy admin is that you have for that has to have that actual Teams license. So when you make a call for it, um, let's see, uh, I was just playing with that there. But you have to put together the information here. So there's like a uh, a member that you need. So you need your Mac Daddy admin member, and then whatever user that you're actually going to send the Teams message to. So that's the user that I grabbed from the uh, from the form generation there. And then you create the chat here. So it wants to see the members that we uh, just kind of displayed over there, and then it just wants to see like a one to one as the uh, chat type, and then. After you create it, you get the uh, the actual ID from the chat back, and then you can send the actual chat with the content of the message. Let's see here. Yeah, so it's just the endpoint there is chats, and then the ID of the chat, and then messages, and then you add the content in the body here. I think that's all I got there. Um, I do have like some of the stuff for forcing the AD stuff. Um, was it? Yeah, so this side of it here, uh, if we do actually have to change it at the Active Directory level, I have a, a workflow that pushes a PowerShell script to it and uh, changes it on the machine. And then I have another workflow that uh, runs in Azure AD Sync. And I think uh, Adam helped me build that one out if you guys had any questions about that. Yeah, 